your small neighborhood church with a big heart and where Jesus is the reason for our joy. This is Gail Williams, and I am a lay speaker here at Westside. This is the second Sunday of Easter. The scripture for my message comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. It is when Jesus appears to his disciples after the resurrection. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus went on to perform many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by, that by believing you may have life in his name. We all desire peace and rest. Up until a few weeks ago, most of our lives were full of family, friends, church, work, play, chores, as well as countless other responsibilities and commitments that had us running here and there every day, sometimes all day. We took little to no time to recharge, trying to juggle it all, keeping all the balls in the air, and then constantly feeling like there just wasn't enough time in the day to get it all done. Every day ended with anxiety about the things that weren't finished, and the next day began wondering and worrying again about how it was all going to get done. Sometimes we decided we had to sacrifice something important to complete something equally important, and that might mean giving up a special date night, a date with a friend or shopping alone, one of my personal favorites. It might even have affected our spiritual lives. We might have sacrificed spending time with God, reading His Word or in prayer, or even going to church, all in the name of getting things done. I know I am guilty as charged. Then, suddenly, just a few short weeks ago, life as we know it radically changed. The world is suddenly being held captive by a pandemic. Almost everything we know as normal has come to a screeching halt. It's almost like the world has stopped turning on its axis. Schools are closed, businesses, are, businesses, gyms, and restaurants are closed, sporting events, concerts, and other productions are canceled. We are told don't go to church, don't have family gatherings, stay home, stay safe, work from home, home school. Even then, go to your doctor's appointment at home. And if you have to go out, stay six feet away from the next person, even if it's your brother or your mother or your cousin. Six feet and cover your nose and your mouth. That message alone is enough to create anxiety and fear in our hearts. So if we can't leave our homes, we can't possibly keep all those balls in the air, which is what first struck panic in many hearts. And then... We have had to let many of those balls hit the ground with the knowledge that we are all in this together and that eventually we will be able to get back to our lives. Now suddenly, we have time. 
How do we fill up all those hours that made up our lives now that we are forbidden to do so many of the things we've always done, have taken for granted, have sacrificed other important things to make sure those things get done? What do we fill our time with now? Well, maybe it's now time to do those projects we've been putting off for months or maybe even years. Or simply find things we want to do now but we never took the time to do before, like hike or read or learn a new language, a new recipe. Oh, the excitement of it all. But wait, what if we didn't fill it up? What if we used this time for peace and rest? In order to reach that place of peace and rest, we must first have one very important thing. We must have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith that he died for our sins and was resurrected from the grave to be with his Father, our Father, in heaven. Faith that, during times of trouble, we need to look for him, to him, for guidance. We need to have faith that God's got this. Even though the regular stressors of the day are gone for now, and are on the shelf, how many of us can say that they feel at peace and that we've experienced any rest? How many have achieved that moment of peace and quiet we've been longing for just a few short weeks ago? Is your fear and anxiety about not getting it all done replaced by feelings of anxiety and worry about the, what the future holds? About when this stay-at-home order will end and life can get back to normal? Will it get back to normal? I have had to remind myself time and time again that God's got this in the palm of his hand and it will be over in his time. All we must do is believe, have faith, and he will bring us through. As the scripture reading referred to, when Jesus came and stood among the disciples after the resurrection, he had to convince them that he was Jesus by showing them the scars on his hands and on his side. And then he had to do it again a week later for his disciple Thomas, who had not been present the first time and did not believe the other disciples when they told him what they had seen. Jesus had to show Thomas the scars on his hands and allow Thomas to put his hand in the hole in his side before Thomas would believe. He had to be told, Thomas had to be told by Jesus to stop doubting and believe. Jesus didn't withhold blessing from Thomas, but he did tell him that those who believe without seeing proof first were blessed. That, my friends, is faith. Since we don't have the ability to see the actual scars on our Lord's body, we must find other ways of reminding ourselves of our faith. Because sometimes we need reminding when we are walking through the valley of the shadow of doubt. During these difficult times when you are feeling doubtful and you feel your faith is being tested, here are some ways to remind yourself that God is really here and he's really got this. The most basic way that we see God and that he's got this is that he wakes us up every day. Without the spirit, the human body is dead. When God calls us home, the spirit leaves the body. So if we wake up each day, we should take comfort in knowing God's got this because he woke us up. Now take a look outside your window. Do you see the trees, the sky, the clouds? Know that God the Father, our Father, created all of that just for us because he loves us and wants us to have a beautiful place in which to live. And if we listen... We can hear God's voice inside our head telling us to give all this anxiety and fear up to him because he's got this. We must realize life is all about Jesus Christ and our faith in him. We cannot please God nor have a relationship with him without believing in Jesus Christ and accepting him as our Savior and Lord. Every Christian must have faith in God through Christ and must seek to please him by living a life of obedience to his word. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Believe now that Jesus is real, and because he has died and rose again, we all have the promise of everlasting life. Believe now that God's got this. And when you believe that, you may just find your long-desired peace and rest. Be with me in an attitude of prayer. 
O oh, gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for the precious gift of Jesus and the daily reminders that you have every little thing in our lives in the palm of your very capable hand. Continue to be with us as we maneuver through these uncertain times, holding on to the certainty of knowing that you've got this. Until then, may each of us be strengthened in the knowledge that we walk by faith and not by sight in you. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and all God's people said, Amen.